on Friday, a documentary, NFL Films, created with the Roku channel in a Roku original called NFL Draft, The Pick is In. NFL Films cameras were embedded in the draft rooms of Carolina, Jacksonville, Indianapolis, and Dallas, followed around a handful of other folks involved with the draft, including yours truly and our guest, back on the Rich Eisen Show, at Rap Sheet on X uh, or Twitter, right? Um, Ian Rappaport back here on the program, my colleague from the NFL Network. How you doing, Ian? What's going on, Rich? How, How you been? Doing? You good? Yeah, um, I'm good. What did you uh, just Pelotero get? It? Sent me a message. I was about to say, did you What's get that? something? Did you just get something? Did, did, is there a trade? What happened? Something's going on? Uh, no so, trade. Okay. No, no, no. Well, I mean, you know, there's. I would say there's something that I'm waiting on that will probably happen during your show. Oh, okay. Um, oh. Okay. Okay. You know, All right. Of medium, of medium importance. We'll see. <laughs> medium. Okay. Uh, hopefully is, during your show. Is that a waiting for an hour? But we'll see. Is that a lunch order? Because I yeah. saw you eat like a fiend during this documentary uh, that's going to be airing on Friday, <laughs> guys. I got to tell you. You know. You could put it away. Ian. I would say. Holy cow. In, in defense of myself. Yes. Uh, I was very hungry, and the food was very good. Well, again, for those who have yet to see this documentary, which is pretty much everybody listening to us and everybody looking Everyone, at me yeah. right now on this set, um, <laughs> there is a moment. Um, actually, do do we have uh, Hoskins? Do you have that? Be able to play here? Um, it's Are a, we allowed to play? It? Well, yeah, oh, dude. This is the Roku channel, pal. You know. <laughs> um, so, oh. so here's the deal. Um, <laughs> they they illust- they wanted to illustrate uh, day three and how long it is and how drawn out it may be for those who are involved in it. So they showed me on the set doing this. Anybody out there in contact with anybody who might have any idea about lunch, if it exists on the planet for us? So that's what I'm saying, okay? Right. Uh-huh. And then they show right after that, Somebody eating like he's Henry VIII for all the barbecue in Kansas City, and that would be you. So I'm starving, and you're in the you're in the orchestra pit, like eating like a king. I mean, look, part of my job, Rich, is to make sure that I know how to get things. Now, sometimes it's information. That's a, you know a lot of times my specialty. Yes, sir. But it's not just information. Um, sometimes it's things, and I think in this case. The ability to get an absolute massive barbecue tray delivered to my set so I didn't have to move. I could just devour it and feed the entire crew, which we did, except for you guys. Yes. Um, it was a great thing. And um, I thought the Kansas City Barbecue Fest or whatever that was did a nice job in filling up my belly. Well, and interestingly enough, and I, I think we can share this for real, uh, Ian, is you, you saw the documentary or at least your parts of it first. And I think you should share why you, you, you wanted to review it before anybody got to see it, Ian. Go for it. Well, for real. you know, Rich, I think what, what I do is, you know, obviously I report things and make them public. But a lot of what I do is behind the scenes conversations about trades, about prospects, about where I hear people are going. I talk to a lot of coaches and general managers. And I was nervous that somebody would be able to tell who I'm talking to. Mm-hmm. That's, you know, really what I was nervous about. So I wanted to, I had no issues with it. Of course, they did an amazing job, but I was, you know, I was nervous that someone's going to hear a voice on the other line and say, Hey, why is he talking to him? Or why is she talking to him? So um, I think they did a great job in sort of masking everyone who I've talked to, but also, you know, exploring what my world is, which is a very, very strange place. And there's, you know, some parts of that where they'll be like, man, that guy really knew what he was talking about. And then there's some parts of it where you'll be like, that guy did not know what he was talking about. So it's it's a perfect way to encapsulate everything with the draft. Well, and, and, and then there are moments like um, in the broadcast that, that are revealed. Um, well, I mean, moments in the draft that are revealed that show that, in all honesty, what, what we're talking about on the draft is far afield of what's actually happening. And the perfect example that I was talking about earlier, Ian, was the trade the Bills made uh, uh, to go get Dalton Kincaid, figuring the Cowboys were going to go get him. And right. these cameras reveal they didn't mention Dalton Kincaid once while this was all going on. They had right. no intention of taking him. And I'm just wondering if this documentary might reveal to the Bills – 
yeah, I mean, you you got the guy you wanted, which is all that matters. But, you know, um, the Cowboys weren't going to take the guy you wanted. I'm wondering if they might learn that from the documentary, you know? Yeah, I, I think they will. Um, but, you know, it's interesting because this always happens. Now, a lot of times we don't know about it, but this does always happen. You know, when teams make trades up, and I think the Steelers did one with the Jets, same thing. Uh, not with the Jets, but over the Jets. Yes, with the Patriots. Um, right, with the Patriots. And so, you know, it was basically like, the, you know, the Steelers make a trade up. They take the top tackle available, and everyone thinks that it, the Jets were about to take him. The reality, the Jets were going to take a pass rusher. And I think, you know, similar situation for the Cowboys. But, you know, if you're the Bills, you say, all right, all we have to do is give up. I can't remember what it was, a fourth rounder or something like that. And are we going to be right? Are we going to be wrong? I don't know, but I like this player enough that this gamble is worth it. And I think, you know, that's why teams do it. And so that's why what I reported on draft night, which was this has to be a tight end because everyone thinks the Cowboys want a tight end. And so one part was right, but it turns out the Cowboys did not want a tight end. It's unbelievable. And again, it's a terrific documentary. And I love that, you know, seeing you doing your thing and everybody else. It, it, it's really awesome. Again, it's Friday on on the Roku channel. And, and it's an interesting time for a documentary on the draft to come out because uh, we're 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 at the point of the 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 calendar where all the bets that were made on that draft weekend, it's now on the table and the cards are going to be in the air to use, I guess, the more of the gambling phrases that it, it's now time. It's now time, and, and it's it, it's just amazing to me as I'm watching. I was watching this documentary last night in, a, in, our, in our house at NFL Network, Ian, that, um, you know, watching the Colts and, and sweating it out and then getting the guy that they want and getting the guy they want in Anthony Richardson. And here we are on the verge of the playing season, and they've got a massive Jonathan Taylor problem. And mm-hmm. I'm wondering, how did we get here? on that front, Ian? Well, uh, I think, first of all, I learned something in the documentary, too, Okay, which is that when, you know, the the Cardinals were talking to teams about moving out of three, um, you know, the, it seemed that at least one of the teams they talked to were the Colts, and then Chris Bauer decided not to move, and they still got their guy. I, you know, thought that, but I didn't quite know that, and I think that's something that's something we learned. Um, you know, the other thing with the Jonathan Taylor situation, you know, if you're an organization, all you really want to do, you know, the inner workings of your locker room is draft well, develop those really good players, and then reward those players with big contracts so they can be happy, so they can get what they deserve. And so other players can see that when you work hard and you succeed, you get what you deserve, and the team will take care of you. The Colts, because of the kind of season they had last year, decided that they were not going to give any contracts. And when you have a really good player who's one of the best in his position, who's 24 years old, and who wants what he believes he deserves, that's a big disconnect. Uh, and I think that started the process of how we got here. You know, Jim Mercer go, taking to Twitter and just weighing in on the running back market for sure did not help things, for sure. Um, but this all contributed to a really difficult and challenging situation. So where does it stand right now? What do you have for me? Well, he has permission to seek a trade. His mm-hmm. agent, Maki Kawa, has spoken to teams. There are several teams interested. A trade is for sure possible. I don't know if one's going to happen, um, but it's definitely possible. Uh, it's And, you know, it's complicated They'll eventually want a new contract, all of those things. But he is a great 24-year-old player, one of the best in his position. And there's a market, and there's a real market. So we'll see if he actually gets traded. Um, but all that is going on as we speak right now. So um, when you say eventually he's going to want a new contract, is it possible that a trade gets um, consummated and then he goes to a new spot and what doesn't get a, a new deal already on the table laid out that they'll deal with it eventually? I mean, Is that possible? I would say that teams would know that he's going to want a new contract. Now, you know, is one going to be done in conjunction with the trade? I think that's 
possible, but we've seen, you know, we've seen it happen. Like I think the Bradley Chubb deal was the latest example. He gets traded to from the Broncos to the Dolphins, and then it, I think it was like two or three days later he gets a huge new contract. So we've seen that happen in the past. I just don't know if one is directly going to come with the trade. What's your sense why the Colts don't want to pay him in a manner in which other teams are willing to uh, trade for him and then pay him? What's what's your thoughts on I, that? I, I just think, yeah, I mean, I just think they decided that because of the way last season ended that it just doesn't send the right message to pay anyone. Um, you know, that would not be the way I would go about things if, if it were me, but it's not me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I think that's, that's part of the deal is that it doesn't seem like anyone's getting a new contract. Um, and, you know, Jonathan Taylor has to sort of bear the brunt of it, I guess. And, and at the risk of, um, you know, asking a dicey question, I will do it anyway. I did it to Breer the other day, so I'm an equal opportunity dicey question asker. That's right. uh, we, can all, we can all handle it. Understood. I know that. Um, it just strikes me as Chris Ballard gets the quarterback, brings in the coach, mm-hmm. okay, brings in the coach. Mm-hmm. That is a seems to be a great coach quarterback combination. He knows the own, he knows the owner is more um, you know itchy in recent years, right? And and mm-hmm. the seat he sits on is potentially hot. He's mm-hmm. gonna he's gonna let this happen in the last couple weeks before uh, a playing season that is crucially important here. Or, or it, it, so what I'm asking is. Is this Ursay just saying, I'm not paying people after that. Too bad. Over. And, you know, Chris, we're going to, you know, figure it out. Or is 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 the GM, uh, you know, locked up with the owner on this, Ian? The owner writes the checks. So when we're talking about overarching contract decisions, I don't know specifically if Jim Ursay made this decision, but the owner writes the checks. Uh, and so at least this is something that, it appears Ursay believes because he is ultimately in charge and Chris Ballard works for him. Um, you know, and that was, I think, the way it was with the, um, Saturday. You know, the Jeff Saturday situation yeah. during the season. <laughs> Clearly. You know, it was Chris Ballard works for Jim Ursay, and that is what was going on, and Ursay made the decision to hire a coach who had never coached before. Um, and so I don't know who exactly made the decision, but certainly this is something that Jim Ursay is, you know, is very much on board with. Um, and I think it's Chris Ballard's job to figure out the best he can do with his team as best way he can. Wow. So, crystal ball it for great. me. Crystal ball it. I know you don't have a crystal ball. We actually have one here in the show, but it's too heavy for me to go pick it up and bring it over. <laughs> um, what you do you think? Eight ball? <laughs> I do have a magic eight ball. You know, it's like actually in my ball. hands right now. You, <laughs> what's the question I should ask the magic eight ball then? What is it? I assume it's you, where does Jonathan Taylor get traded? No, I, that, I don't think they. I don't. They, yeah, I don't have team names in here. So where does? So no. I'll just ask you. Where do you think he gets traded? No. What are the teams interested? Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I would. I would take a look at some of the teams that, you know, still have have some money and still have a need there. I mean, the Denver Broncos have been a team that in the past has had a running back need. The Miami Dolphins have had a running back need. Um, you know, I think those are, you know, those are probably a couple of them. Um, let's see who else. Um, you know, there's some teams in the division I think might have a running back. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to trade to anyone in the division. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, I, I would say, you know, the Buffalo Bills, I know we're in talks at some point with on the DeAndre Hopkins thing. At least, at least they considered bringing in a high, high value, big money veteran. You know, you wonder if they'd have some interest. There's, there's some teams I think that have some interest, um, but we'll see. You know, kind of when, if a deal is able to come together, it is very challenging to do, but it is not impossible. So, what, then, then let me ask this one for you before asking a couple more questions, and you get on with the rest of your day. Uh, more likely, Jonathan Taylor gets traded or comes back to the Colts and the Colts just um, put a little bit of, uh, you know, money on top of his contract for a safe, uh, a face saving and, and go to work. What do you think? Um, 
I have not gotten the indication that the Colts were willing to do anything. Um, you know, it's hard for me to imagine that he just comes back and everything's fine. Like, you know, I I would be a little surprised, mm-hmm. honestly. Um, I'd be a little surprised if, if he plays for them. I, I mean, look, anything's possible. I just don't know how it would happen. I mean, this is a relationship that's not good. Not good. So we'll see. Last one for you, Ian. Uh, Chris Jones tweeted out uh, in response to a fan asking when you're coming back. He said week eight. What, what What's going on there in Kansas City? Well, I mean, week eight is is a, is the, the day for him to get in a crude season. Um, so I think that's why. Now, he's tweeted a lot of things or Instagrammed a lot of things this year. Um, you know, in some ways I follow players on social media and in some ways I do not. Um you know, I would say this would be one where he's tweeted a lot of different things this year. So I think everyone's best to kind of take it for what it is and take a deep breath. There's still time to work out a deal. Um, and, you know, we'll we'll see if a holdout is, in fact, his reality. But I know this. He's another one who has earned a very, very large contract. Yeah, of course. So he wants uh, Aaron Donald money or bust? Is that what it is, pretty much? I mean, everybody wants all the money they can get. Um, I don't know that it's Aaron Donald money or bust. Um, mm-hmm. I know he would like a lot of money. It's really a question of, you know, is he going to be right below it? Is he going to be a little above? I mean, a little above it seems hard. Not impossible, but hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, could he end up being the highest paid defensive tackle not named Aaron Donald? I think he probably should be. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see where it ends up. All right, Ian. Thanks for the time, brother. It was uh, great to see you in this documentary, on, and uh, we'll see it on Friday night. And I'll see you before then, if not. All right. Look, take I care. look forward to watching it for the first time. Well, I mean, usually I, from now on, I'll watch everyone else. First time I watch it. It's great, man. It, it really is so well done. And the Deuce Vaughn um, drafting moment is, as I said earlier, first time I, Jerry Jones has ever caused me to tear up. For real. It's something <laughs> else. It's pretty yeah, cool. I, I look forward to that. It really is yeah. cool. Uh, and you didn't get the uh, medium hot news information during this conversation? I mean, hopefully eventually. At rap sheet for the later. For, at, at, the, the later go. on. Thanks for the call, Ian. Appreciate it, man. We'll Thanks, chat Rich. soon. That's Ian Rappaport at rap sheet. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 